Next question is from David K. Silva. Can trainers today see the same financial success you all had without an online presence? Or has the fitness industry changed so much that an online presence is required to be successful? No, Whoa, that's. I mean, I, this will be a good discussion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I have, I, I'll tell you what I think. Okay. I think I, I, I would have achieved the same level of success without an online presence. But with the tools available now, I think I would have achieved yeah. a higher level of success. It could accelerate what you're already doing. Yes. So my success was based around my local community, my local gym. The people that I was in contact with, that hasn't changed. That's still there. Wait There's a still people. I, I don't agree with that. I agree hundred percent. That's what I think. I totally 100%. disagree. You think I, I you think you would have you would have gotten less success today doing the same stuff you did before. Meaning that, okay, so the way I take this is like someone's asking if we, you don't have an online presence, can you can you build as much can you have as much success as we have today? Re okay, yes, but no. use yourself. I think so. Of course I think, not. I think, I, I not think scalable. I, I, the reason why this business is so successful oh, is because there's mind there's oh, nine yeah. different revenue I think streams. He's talking no, no, no. about personal training. When you were a trainer, yeah, not not not. Well, we didn't no. have any of those things when we were trainers and we were successful. <laughs> no shit. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's why that's what the question is. That's why the, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no, no. Here's the okay. The question literally is: Can trainers today see the same financial success you all had back then? Yes. Got it. Okay. So I today. If I did everything I did before mm -hmm. today, I get the same level of success. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the difference. Yeah, I agree. The difference now is that there's all these tools, and I would have gotten to the same- To project your message even further. I would have gotten even more success. So it's easier today because of the tools well, to be even more successful. Something that something that it does draw parallels to where we're at in this business, too, that's similar to that conversation is that- this business is built on adding value and giving people good results, and them and and, that be, uh, and and referral business. I mean, yeah. we have grown the, the show. Root of it all. The show has been grown organically still to this day. We've never paid a dollar in advertising the show. That's right. We st we have never had to go out and promote, put any money into get us in front of more people, which means. 90% of the people that come in, either one fell like into us somehow and then stuck around, or they're, most of what you see is someone refers. Someone, mm -hmm. a friend tells them, oh my God, you have to listen to these guys. They give out great free information. So, and that was a lot of my success as a trainer. As a trainer, I, what, I didn't do all kinds of, I was I was terrible online. J Justin was much better here as far as building a website and things like that. Um, I didn't go hit the street, hit the pavement and bring a bunch of people to me and it wasn't like that. It was like it was if I serviced yeah. the people I had really, really mm -hmm. well, eight out of 10 of them tell their sister, their brother, their yeah. uncle, you got to see Adam. And when you've put enough years behind your, your belt of doing that, you build an incredible referral. And those, by the way, are the best clients, the highest paying, the most consistent are referrals. Getting some random cold lead in, in a business back then, it, it takes a lot more convincing to get that person to stay with it's you and spend a lot of money. So. You got you to prove your methods. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that you got to be effective. That's the first. Yes, that's the very first thing you need to do. And that happens like person to person. And so, you know, that's where you build. That's where you build everything from. And so I, I don't... I, I will argue that if you try to move in the online space before you actually like make that happen, you're not going to be successful. Yeah, that's a rough one. And I'm going to rephrase the question, by the way. Okay, so I, what if I went to good because that lost me. Uh, it, what if I went to uh, <laughs> what if I went to a construction worker and I said, "Hey, uh, could you still build this house if this was 50 years ago without the same you know technology and equipment?" And they'd say, "Well, yeah, it'd take a lot longer, <laughs> but I could do it." Yeah. Um, you know, we have houses that are hundreds yeah, of good years point. old, right? So yeah, I would I would get the same success that I had before, but there's so many tools available now that you're it's probably wise to utilize them to some extent. Sure. They, they exist and they can help. But the but the more things change, the more they stay the same. The same rules apply: hard work, consistency, you know, tremendous value in service. But now we have all these online tools that can only help and augment that. I'll give you an example, right? So. I'd been training people and running gyms in San Jose or in the Bay Area, maybe as far as Sunnyvale, right? But still the Bay Area for a long time. So I had developed a reputation and a name for myself in this area, outside of the Bay Area. You don't know who I am, but if you're in the area and you say my name in a gym, at some point, you, a lot of people wouldn't know who I was. I just did it for so long and I did a good job. And at that point, I was charging. This is, you know, I don't know how, how long ago, maybe six years ago, right? No, longer than that. Eight years ago, nine years ago. I was charging as a trainer, individual, my single session rate was $150 an hour, which at the time was at the higher end 
of what a chart a trainer would charge. And I did that through building a reputation and value. After literally one year of Mind Pump, we weren't even big. We weren't even a big podcast. We had a few thousand downloads. Not that big. Nobody knew who we were except for the few people that listened to us. I'll never forget. A lady walks into my studio and she wants to hire me. And she heard, she found me through the podcast. And I said, I don't have room for clients. And she said, I'll pay whatever. And I thought, $300 an hour, then I'll train you. And she said, no problem. And I, that's when I realized, wow, the authority that you could build through some of these new tools is incredible. So yeah, you can do it, but why? Yeah, but I caution you though, because that's because you it you had years, decades of experience right. that led it up to that. It wasn't like it was just that. That's exactly. right. And, yeah. the, and so and I actually, I'm actually writing a post right now. So I've been working on this post right now, going back and forth with our buddy Darren who writes and, and like having him critique and help me. And it's, it's titled uh, The Burnt Out Influencer. And one of the things I talk about in there is uh, false market signals that you receive when you get build this online presence. Because so this young generation coming up with these tools that are incredible, that help you to scale a massive business, that can definitely complement and speed up the process of becoming a great trainer. Unfortunately, though, people put so much energy on hacking the algorithm and yeah. getting more people in front of them that they, of course, you get a million people in front of you and you're a personal trainer, even if you're terrible and no one's ever trained with you or everybody that has trained with you has probably not got good results, you could still sell some people. It's so many eyes and so much traffic. Yeah. And at that, and then that's an extreme, right? One million, but put it down to 10,000. 10,000 is a lot. 10,000 people in, in front of you. And then all of a sudden you sell two or three or four things and, and you get this false signal that like, oh, I figured it out. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And so what do you do? You double and triple down on the, the hacking the algorithm and building the social media media when really what's going to what's going to build you a long-term business that's going to succeed in any market and any time with any technology is being great at your job and so it's kind of putting the cart before the horse yeah. to focus so much on social media when you still suck at what you do 100%. well yeah i mean think of it this way too like as you're working through all these things and like uh, troubleshooting and playing detective with a lot of different types of, of clients coming in, you know, inevitably there'll be holes in the way that you do things. And there's more education necessary to be able to, you know, meet that demand or, or be able to help somebody at a, at a better level and to put yourself like way out there where you have, uh, you know, you put like that amount of volume in front of you and you get that many more variables when you haven't actually like been able to figure out a lot of those different types of avatars coming your way. It's going to open you up to criticism. You might do something wrong at a mega scale versus like being able to kind of control that, uh, you know, at, at a smaller scale. Dude, I'll, I'll never forget this. There was a restaurant that opened up, uh, I want to say it was in Palo Alto. So really nice downtown area. And uh, I was with Jessica and we saw the sign. We looked inside. It wasn't open yet, right? Because it was a little early. I looked inside. I'm like, oh, this the this place looks incredible. It was new, new restaurant just opening up. We're like, we got to try, and it looked incredible. Like the menu, the ambiance, the tables, the everything. I'm like we got to try this out. It opens up. We go in there, and the food was fucking terrible. Anyway, the, the, it closed down. Right, it shut down not that long after because they had shitty food and they didn't have good service. They had a great surface. They had a great sign. They attracted people, but they sucked. So they're out of business. If all your focus is on social media and online presence, and you're a shitty trainer, you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed. The root the the base still is true. You have to be good at what you do, provide tremendous service, have people value you, and then the other stuff supplements it. And so that's what I mean by I think I'd have the same success, but I could probably do better because then I could now get even more eyes on me. And at that point, I was already a really good trainer. I was at, here's, here's something, here's a nugget for this person that's asking this question. So I was asked in an interview not that long ago, if I had to, uh, if I was a trainer and I had to start all over, Mind Pump didn't exist, and I began to build this social media presence, what would it look like? And I said, I wouldn't worry so much on my social media following. What I would use my social media is to complement my current in-person business. So what my post would look like would be like this. Uh, I get it. I'm, and this is me pretending I'm a new trainer. So I don't know very much. I'm just learning. Maybe I have one certification on my belt and I get a client. Uh, first time I get somebody who has a torn ACL just out of surgery and I got to rehab them. Oh my God, I'm scared. I've never done this before. So what I do, I go home, I start mm -hmm. to research, I get some books on it, or I start Google searching, reading articles on the proper way to rehab this person. 
then I take that information from that research and that becomes a post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I, I am, I'm servicing my current clients. So they have now a, a resource to reference back to their specific program. I also may track another person who also is yeah. in that same situation. And I'm not worried about, do I get a hundred followers at 10,000 likes? It's literally to complement my current business. So it's only going to make my current business even more impactful. And mm -hmm. over time, what's going to happen? I'm going to get smarter. I'm going to learn more. And then before you know it, I'm going to have, Dude, tons of posts around this. it's okay and yes it's a lot has changed since we were trainers but not a there's also stuff that like websites still existed i know i remember trainers spending so much money and time mm -hmm. and effort into their websites like thousands of dollars to make it look so good and all this money on their business cards and they failed because they were shitty trainers right. i didn't have a website and then when i did have a website it was literally a landing page where you could you know i could contact you and that was it and I was kicking their asses because I was a good trainer. By you know, this is a very common question with coaches and trainers right now. In fact, we do coaching for a small group of trainers through NCI, and this has to be the question I, I've, I've heard the most consistently. It's like, what do I do with this online right. presence, and what does this look like? And I tell them the same thing: like, you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Focus on that important stuff first, and then everything else has to supplement. And by the way, if you're if you're watching this and you want to get even more in depth coaching and training, uh, I believe the the page to do so is mindpumpnci.com, and you can go there. And then there's like opportunities for coaching, and uh, this is not something we'll be doing forever. No, this is our men mentorship that we yes. started with Jason Phillips, and it's a you know every every week there is a call where we cover of, a lot of these topics. One of us are are on the phone talking with Jason, and this is the stuff that right. we get into.